everyone. For the past five years, I've been collecting many watches. Omega, Rolex, and Seiko were the brands I'm mostly interested in. Lesson learned, there is no such thing as a perfect watch. The watch we have today is very interesting. It's part of Seiko collection of the reinterpretation of the original 62 Mass, released in 1965. This is not a history lesson, but normally a watch heritage can add more value to it, and this is what we are going to discuss next. This watch price is around $950. For a Seiko watch, this is not a cheap one. People are even claiming it is overpriced. I compare this SPB239 to my previously owned SKXs. I can see improvement in every aspect of the watch, which of course will come with an extra cost. Ardlix crystal versus sapphire, a higher quality strap that is comfortable to wear, case finishing that is on another level. A hacking movement with 70 hours power reserve, and a refined dial with metallic indices that looks so beautiful in different lighting conditions. A coated stainless steel bezel insert that works and feels more premium. So, if we are saying that this watch is overpriced, the question is, compared to what? I had various Seikos along the years, beside my more expensive pieces from other brands that I can surely tell they were overpriced. Seiko has been always in the place of a beater watch for me, until this prospects line started to show up. Initially, I wasn't convinced to pay $1,000 for a beater watch for a Seiko. But once I had the watch in hand, it felt completely different than anything I handled before from Seiko. So the real question is what will be the price of all the additional parts you need to transform the SKX to this. Add to that the workmanship if you're not going to mod it yourself. Last but not least is what this model resembles, an original diver design that was initially released in the year 1965. All this comes with a price. Now let's discuss the case design. The watch is 40.5 mm in diameter, a thickness of 13.2 mm, and a lug to lug of 47.6, nearly 48, which for me is a perfect size for my 6.75 inch. The case has a die shield coating which protects the watch from scratches. It gives the stainless steel color a yellow tint which matches perfectly the gilt dial we have here. Previously, I didn't like this dial shield color on the SPB143. It was a mismatch and it didn't look good in my eyes. This is how the dial shield coating looks like beside a normal stainless steel watch. You can see the yellow tint on the Seiko. As mentioned before, I didn't like this tint on the SPB143, it made it look dull, but with this gilt dial, it looks perfect. The case is brushed on the top and on the sides, but we have this elegant polish line on the side that just takes this case to another level. It looks very elegant and not what I'm used to from Seiko which tends to be more sporty and utilitarian and just getting the job done. In fact, this case reminds me so much of the Omega C Master 300 Master Coaxial I used to have, mainly because of the straight lugs and the patina dial, although I prefer this dial more, which I will discuss at the end of the video. Speaking about the dial, which is in my opinion the most important aspect of any watch, I can deal with a strap that I don't like, because I can simply change it. I also can live with a movement that does not hack. 
Initially, I thought I couldn't until I fell in love with the SKX. The dial of this watch is the most interesting part of it. Since I already sold my SPB143, I was so excited when this watch was announced because it looked like it would fix my problem. With the SPB143, I had two main problems. First, the dial that looked better in pictures than the reality, at least for me. It was faded and not crisp enough. It was more a light grey in most lighting conditions. Second was the bracelet that this watch doesn't come with. At the end of this video, I will show you how it looks like on the bracelet. But this is simply a very dynamic and elegant dial. I can describe it as charming. It really depends on the lighting. Sometimes it looks matte black and then suddenly you get this beautiful sunburst effect. It even looks grey sometimes in the daylight. The color of the font on the dial matches the overall theme of the watch perfectly. The hands are halfly brushed, half polished, which makes it extremely legible in all conditions with the second hand completely polished. A wide date wheel that add more contrast to the dial. Some people complained and they wanted it to have the same gilded color. In my opinion, it just add more contrast and it looks beautiful. It adds more character to the watch. Overall, the dial is beautiful and charming. It is very elegant. I have no complaints here. The bezel is 120 clicks. Why I'm mentioning this? Because for example, the Tudor Black Bay 58 is only 60 clicks. Seiko has been receiving many complaints from customers about the bezels not aligned perfectly. And I had this problem with my SPB143. I will try to show in a picture here, which was misaligned on 3 o'clock. I'm happy to report that this watch aligns perfectly. I'm happy that Seiko is taking their time and listening to the customers. The coin edged bezel is machined beautifully and it adds more to this Omega C Master and Tudor vibes. It's easier to grip. The bezel insert is a coated stainless steel and it looks good. The colors of the font on the bezel matches the color of the dial, the text and the patina loom. Speaking of the loom, let's take a look at it. Seiko has been so famous for their loom. I remember when I first bought my sea urchin and it put to shame my Omega Tag Heuer and even my Rolex watch. I was surprised and it was one of the things that made me fell in love with Seiko. You can see I still have some light in the room, yet the loom works perfectly on this watch. However, Seiko decided to add something special. Most of the Seiko watches you will find the green loom, but here it's a bluish green, which adds more character to the watch and makes it feel more special. I'm happy to report that the loom is strong enough and it would last you the whole night with no problems. People were complaining that previous Seiko models, which are cheaper in price, have stronger loom. But I didn't feel the difference that much. It really doesn't matter. What matters is that it lasts for the whole night and it works perfectly. Next, let's discuss the strap. This watch comes with two NATO straps. And me, being a NATO strap lover, I can happily report that they are of a good quality. The strap is thick but very comfortable on the wrist and feels premium. It's not the average NATO strap quality. From the metallic keepers with Seiko logo to the texture and the material. 
However, I don't like the color of the second strap that came in the box. I have a separate video trying this watch on 8 different straps. Please check the link in the description. The fabric straps incorporate a traditional braiding technique from Japan called Sichu. The rich texture and color complexion are familiar in Japanese culture for their use in fabric designs, as seen in a traditional obijimi. The decorative cord that holds a kimono sash in its place, that's what is mentioned on Seiko website. I will leave the link in the description. They also added the famous wave logo we have on the diver's watch from Seiko, which is the symbol of durability. I'm glad that they added here on the strap. Now let's see how it wears on the wrist. With this NATO strap, Seiko decided to change the design a bit, so you just need to skip the first keeper and go directly to the second one. And this is how to wear it. The watch has the 6R35 Seiko movement, a workhorse, a durable movement as we are used to from Seiko. Seiko supply movements to many micro brands. Their movements are very reliable. It's an improvement on the other Seikos I used to have, since the movement hacks and has a longer power reserve. My experience with Seiko movement has been very well along the years. They are not the most beautiful looking movements, but they work very well. This is the 6R15. The 6R35 in the SPB239 is considered the updated version of this movement. It's not the most beautiful looking movement to look at, but it gets the job done. And they are very reliable most of the time. I had no issue or problem with any Seiko movement I ever owned. However, accuracy is not the best and they can change depending on the position you leave your watch at at night. In my case, when I leave the watch with the crown up, it is fast 5 seconds and when I leave the crown down, the watch runs slower 5 seconds, so I keep changing the position every other day and now I have an accurate watch that I only need to adjust every 2 weeks or even 1 month. Dealing with the movement has been a good experience. Once you screw out the crown, because this watch has 200 meter water resistant, on the first position you can start winding it. The winding action is smooth and can be compared to more expensive watches. One click out, you can find that changing the date is another smooth experience. With the cheaper Seiko movements, I found that the date will start changing 3 hours before midnight. I can see the improvement here. The date wheel starts to move one hour before midnight and it takes one hour to completely change. And talking about the SPB239 in specific, I mentioned before in the forum how it reminds me of my beloved Omega Seamaster, Master Coaxial. It was an extremely elegant piece, but the dial always felt as if it's missing something. Although the Omega movement is in another league, the Seiko dial is just more dynamic in all lighting conditions. Maybe I went too far comparing a $1000 Seiko to a Swiss watch that costs more than $5000. But it will be unfair too to compare the SPB line of watches to the cheaper Seiko ones. Because simply they are in different levels. I was actually quite surprised when I saw this watch. Seiko Diver design philosophy has been always about making the watch utilitarian and getting the job done. Examples on this is the Turtle and the Captain Willard.
which is on my list to get. But what I can find here is an exception, as in my opinion, it rivals the Swiss in the elegance game, where they used to beat Seiko. For me, Seiko has been always in the place of a beater watch, but with this one, I'm glad that this has changed. Now I've got a watch that is elegant, which I can also take to my sauna sessions or any activity without being worried about damaging or even scratching it. And above all, a heritage that comes with a design that was initially released in 1965. In the end, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that it will be helpful to you in making your purchase decision. Also, check the other video if you want to see this watch on 8 different straps. Thank you and stay safe.